Gare E. Bouche de Noël. Bouche de Noël. That will not only attract its glutinous cousin, but will make everybody think it's the real deal. Last week I was peeking at all the different bakeries and looked at those delicious desserts. And then a Swiss roll caught my attention. Looks fabulous, doesn't it? It also made me think of what I want to make for Christmas, which is a bouche de Noël, which is a Swiss roll. It's just called a bit fancier. I mean, it's French. It will be fancy. It's called bouche de Noël. I want to look at it though more in detail to understand what I'm up to if I want to make this gluten free. A Swiss roll is really just a rolled up cake and and out of some weird reasons we really like to roll up our food. So then Bouche de Noël is really just a big roll of chocolate filled with whipped cream. To make a Bouche de Noël you start with a sponge cake which is a very fluffy delicate cake and you can normally get that with all the fancy cream cakes you see in those fancy stores and it's a little bit of a tricky cake so i'm going to make a video just showing you how to make a sponge cake so for purpose of this video we're going to skip ahead you're going to think you mix up all your batters and here we go so your batter is already mixed and instead of pouring it into a cake form you're going to pour it into a baking tray since we are rolling this up we're going to bake the cake for 20 minutes and take it out when the cake is done. Here's where the tricky part starts. You want to let the cake cool down till about body temperature. Then you place a kitchen towel on the top of the dough and start rolling it just like a burrito. And then it needs its beauty rest, so you put it to the side and let it completely cool down. In the meantime, we're gonna work on the decoration for the Bouche de Noël and one of the signature items are mushrooms. Certainly not real mushrooms, and you may not want to pick them. For health and for taste concerns, we're going to make our mushrooms out of marzipan. Working with marzipan can make very sticky fingers, so to prevent that, you normally use powdered sugar. I'm going to roll out some marzipan and use it as the stem of my mushroom. I'm going to use a toothpick and put it through the stem, so I can later easily mount it on the top of the cake. When I have something which looks close enough to a mushroom stem, I'm going to work on the mushroom caps. And there are small little ovals, probably like half a centimeter thick. I attach the marzipan stem and mushroom cap with a sharp knife and mash both the stem and the cap together to stick together. I give the marzipan one more once over just to make sure that it looks like a mushroom. I'm going to put my finished mushroom aside for later. Now I'm going to model the bark of the wood log. After some inspiration how the wood log would look like, I'm going to start melting some chocolate. One of the ways to melt chocolate is over a hot water bath. You want to break down the chocolate into small pieces. You're going to pour about 3 cm or an inch of water into the pot and get it to a boiling point. Now the water releases a lot of steam and and that is when you put the bowl with the chocolate on the top of it. The steam will be melting the chocolate. You want to continuously stir the chocolate to make sure it melts evenly. When the chocolate is all melted, you want to lift the melted chocolate out of the hot water bath. And try not to burn yourself. With different size spatulas or a spoon, spread the chocolate over the prepared baking paper. Depending on the temperature of your workspace, the chocolate will solidify within a few minutes. Now if you're in Florida or a warmer state, it may take a little bit longer so you want to pop it into the freezer for a few minutes or the fridge. When the chocolate is solidified, you want to take a cake spatula and carefully lift the chocolate bark from the baking sheet and put it aside for later. Since I'm now finished with the decoration, I'm going to start working on the filling. I'm going to measure 50 gram or a quarter cup of powdered sugar. 25 grams or a quarter cup of cocoa powder and I pour 400 milliliters about one and a half cup of heavy cream into a mixing bowl. I'm going to whip the heavy cream until it reached a soft peak. I'm going to add a powdered sugar via a fine mesh to make sure it doesn't form too many clumps and then add the chocolate powder the same way. 
I'm going to continue whipping the whipped cream until it comes to a nice stiff peak, but I used the whisk attachment and apparently my machine is too crappy and it got stuck in the whipped cream. So I'm going to quick clean the whip as whip whisk attachment and going to change it to the regular beaters and hopefully I can finish up mixing the whipped cream. With the regular beater attachment I was able to finish the whipped cream filling and I'm going to add now one teaspoon of vanilla extract and for a little bit of added kick I'm going to add one to two teaspoons of dark rum but that's really more optional. I'm going to start assembling my cake now and going to carefully unroll my sponge cake and hope it doesn't break. Unfortunately the cake did break and it's not really surprising because it's a gluten-free cake and it loses a lot of elasticity because of the lack of the gluten which makes everything so elastic. And I'm not going to feel too bad about it because the professional cake is also broken. I'm going to add now the whipped cream filling into the Swiss roll which works also as a really good glue. I'm going to spread the whipped cream filling as evenly as possible into the Swiss roll. The cream should be about half a centimeter or a quarter inch thick. And then when it's evenly spread, I'm going to roll the Swiss roll back up. I was just mildly annoyed that my Swiss roll broke. So I had to explore another way to roll my Swiss roll, hoping it will not break. And I did find another method. And what I found was, I'm going to do the same process, going to bake my dough, let it cool down, but I'm going to let it cool down a little bit more. So it's about 15 degrees Celsius, which should be like 45 degrees Fahrenheit, something in that ballpark. And then I'm going to spread already the whipped cream filling onto the cake. What is important though, is to make sure the cake is cold enough because otherwise the whipped cream will be melting on the top of your cake. So getting the temperature right is really important here. I'm gonna spread the delicious chocolate cream filling on the top of the cake, making sure it's all evenly covered with about half a centimeters or a quarter inch of cream. And then I'm gonna roll up the Swiss roll with the baking paper. So this is the roll where I first rolled the cake and then put the filling in and you can see how it broke over here and over here. Now since it's covered with the whipped cream it doesn't really matter as much. However, if it would be like a naked roll where there is no buttercream you would see the break and it would be really annoying. This is the roll where I put the whipped cream filling in and then rolled it and you still see how the cake broke right here. However, the outside didn't break at all which is nice. So my preference is this rolling method. Let's get back to finishing the cake though. I'm going to cover the Swiss roll with the remaining whipped cream filling. You should have about a third or a quarter left. Um, I'm going to use a cake spatula to evenly cover all the surroundings of the log. And you know if you have any cracks, now you can just put some whipped cream filling in and nobody even will know there was one before. The cake is now nicely covered with the whipped cream and I'm gonna add now my chocolate wood bark to the outside of the log and making it all look really nice and pretty. I'm gonna lay them like shingles till the entire log is covered. And for the grand finale, we're gonna add our mushrooms and dust our bouche de Noël with some powdered sugar. And here's your bouche de Noël. You're ready for Christmas. Below in the video description, I have all the ingredients, the amounts I'm using and local places where you can buy them. And if you enjoyed watching it, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos.